Hi, it's Steph, and we're at the Home Depot, and they've begun receiving all of their perennials. There are some new shrubs and trees, so let's go ahead and take a look at the April inventory at the Home Depot. And here is a beautiful perennial for a part shade to shade location, Pulmonaria, also known as lungwort. This is a beautiful foliage plant because it has this iridescent, almost speckled appearance and it blooms really early in spring. Now this one here looks like it's just finishing up its bloom cycle, but the ones in my garden here in my zone six are just starting to bloom now. So you'll get these little small dainty bell-shaped flowers in shades of pink, purple, and blue. And then once the blooms are done, the foliage gets much larger and it just makes a really beautiful um, foliage plant in a shady spot. Now, if you have pulmonaria planted in too much sun, it can scorch, so something to be aware of. And it likes a well-draining but moist soil. And these here are their larger containers number threes for $19.98 but you can easily split this out right out of the container into at least two plants maybe even more if you're careful. Pulmonaria is hardy in USDA growing zones five through eight. Some dianthus. This flower almost looks like a small carnation and it has a really pretty like a blue gray color foliage and this variety here is called American Pie Georgia Peach Pie. So American Pie is the type of dianthus. It's a line that they have and the color is Georgia Peach Pie. Looks like it's going to be a bit of a light pink with a little bit of a darker center. They get to be 10 to 12 inches in height and 10 to 12 inches in width. Hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit and blooms early spring through summer. Now when these are done blooming if you share them back they will usually put out a second flush of blooms if you're looking for ground covers there are a couple of options here there's some pachysandria as well as this creeping myrtle now this one almost looks like a creeping vinca which in some areas can be invasive um, so it really depends which type of ground cover you're dealing with like even pachysandria could be considered invasive in some spots but in other areas they're pretty well behaved so it just depends where you're growing it these make great ground covers under trees in any spot that you want to retain soil moisture um, keep roots cool but you don't want to necessarily Necessarily keep investing in mulch. This is a great option. Ground covers serve as a living mulch. So the Pachysandria here is $14.98. It looks like you're getting, um, let me see how many plants here. It's a flat of them. So you're getting quite a few, it looks like. Yeah, there's quite a few here. So this is a good option um, if you are trying to start a ground cover um, to have a few plugs that you can go ahead and spread out and plant and they will slowly grow to form sort of a carpet and it is deer resistant. It likes shade and let's see how big it gets. Six to 12 inches in height and it needs six inch spacing and it blooms in early to late spring. Hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is sometimes referred to as spurge and I've seen it bloom in light yellow flowers. It's possible that it might bloom in white as well. And then this one here also reads as deer resistant, the creeping myrtle and um, like the vinca, it has this purple blue kind of flower really pretty this one looks like it might get a little bit taller let's see six to eight inches in height blooms mid to late spring needs 10 to 12 inch spacing hardy down to negative 30 degrees fahrenheit and again you're getting a flat for 14.98 and here is a ground cover that I know to be pretty invasive here in my area in zone six, and that is English Ivy. Um, this can be a pretty aggressive vine and choke out roots. So again, you wanna know in the area that you're in whether or not a specific ground cover would be invasive. And you can just simply Google that to find out. So Ivy is a trailer, 14.98. And it likes part sun. 12 to 24 inch spacing and it gets 12 to 24 inches in height hardy down to negative 20 degrees fahrenheit here is a ground cover that i use and absolutely love and that is creeping phlox now this is an earlier spring bloomer mine will be blooming probably in the next several weeks i have a lavender blue lavender color that is just gorgeous i also have a pink one similar to this one and um, it grows to form sort of a mound of grass like foliage so even when they're not in bloom you have a nice um, grassy looking type ground cover i like mine quite a lot i have it mixed with some daffodils so once the daffodils are pretty much on their way out these will start blooming and pick 
pick up the show. So these here are in their smaller containers. Uh, this one's Drummond's Pink. This is actually the pink variety I have. It's a 20 inch spacing. It gets to be two to six inches in height, water when dry and blooms in late spring. These are super easy to keep in, uh, keep size controlled. All I do is take some garden shears and cut them back if they're in any spot that I don't want them. So usually that's like overhanging my driveway because I have them in the entrance to my driveway. Really easy to cut back. Also really easy to propagate. You just take pieces, stick it in another piece of soil and it'll start rooting. And here's one that has really pretty, vibrant green spring color, and it will have little white flowers, Sweet Woodruff. Um, I've seen this one used quite a lot as well, and it's really dainty and pretty looking. Eight to 12 inches in height, needs 10 inch spacing, water when dry, and it blooms mid spring through summer, harding down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The foliage almost reminds me of lupin, and they actually have some lupin. Let's go take a look. How gorgeous is that? I absolutely love lupin and I actually am growing some using the winter sowing method. I've had some in my garden that I actually bought from bare root and they're also all leafed out and should bloom for me this year. But lupin has beautiful foliage. You can see it looks very similar to that sweet woodruff foliage just in a little bit larger scale. And when it rains or there's water droplets on here, they almost look magnified, really beautiful. But look at these stunning blooms. This one, look how many bloom stalks there are. It's loaded looks like a really beautiful light yellow with some pink. Look at that. These are absolutely gorgeous. They like a well draining soil. So if they have too much water, you can risk rotting the root. So that is one thing that Lupin likes, full sun and a well draining soil. So this one here is called the Lupin Staircase. It likes full sun, perennial. It gets to be 28 to 36 inches in height and is 18 to 24 inch spacing. It says water when dry and hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit and blooms late spring through summer. I have my purple Lupin planted with iris and they are such beautiful companion plants together. Another favorite perennial in my garden is this here. This is the Butterfly Blue Scabiosa, and it is a short-lived perennial. And what that means is typically perennials will come back year after year, but this one here might come back for two to three seasons and then stop returning. But you can keep your plant going by dividing it after two seasons or so. These are absolutely beautiful. The pollinators love them, and they bloom nonstop from mid to late spring all the way through your first hard frost. Look at that. Such a beautiful lavender color. Now let's take a look at the specs on this. So the pincushion flower, these are $9.98 for this two and a half quart container. They're a perennial for full sun and they get to be 12 to 15 or 12 to 18 inches in height and they need 12 to 15 inch spacing. Water when dry and hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. They bloom late spring through fall. Salvia, a beautiful spike perennial to add vertical interest to your garden. These pair so nicely with things like roses and even nepeta. I actually have both nepeta and salvia in my front border along with some double pink knockout roses. And in the beginning of June, my display is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. These will start blooming for me at the end of May and they will hold out until I get my roses blooming. So they look so pretty together. Also, you can keep these blooming pretty long by regularly deadheading them, which means just following the dead blooms down down and chopping them and then you'll get a new flush of blooms. I actually have a video on my channel on how I keep my salvia blooming almost all summer. They come in many different varieties. I happen to have May Night, but this one here is called Bordeaux Steel Blue Salvia. It is a full sun perennial. They get to be 10 to 36 inches in height. They need 10 to 24 inch spacing, water when dry and hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And they bloom late spring through fall. Now, when it comes to salvias, there are annual varieties like the Rock and Blue, and then there are also uh, perennial varieties. This one here is a perennial. This one here is a different color. You can see there's a little bit more of a vibrant blue. Now, when they talk about blue in flowers, it's almost always just a shade of purple, but it has more of an indigo color to it. So this one here is called Dark Matter, and it gets to be 10 to 36 inches in height, needs 10 to 24 inch spacing, hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and blooms late spring through fall. Here's a perennial I've never seen sold at the local box store, and that is Spiderwort. It looks like it has a small little um, purple bloom, and it's a grass-like perennial. So let me know, do you like growing spiderwort in your garden or have you ever seen it before? This variety is called Amethyst Kiss uh, Transcantia Hybrid. It is 9.98, likes full sun, gets to be 18 to 24 inches in height. And let's see, it blooms early summer through fall, hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Some more pretty dianthus. 
And this one's already started to bloom. You can see they look like tiny little carnations. Really pretty. And this variety here, let's see what it's called. Everlast Cherry Swirl. It's a full sun perennial. It has a clumping habit. Gets to be four to 10 inches in height. Needs 10 inch spacing. Water when dry and hardy down to negative 10 degrees. And it blooms late spring through mid fall. Look at that. Looks like a bouquet. So pretty and tons of bloom buds. Look at that. Another one that just by shearing it back, you'll continue to get another flush of blooms out of it. And Armeria or Sea Thrift. I actually planted some of this in my garden last season or the season before, and I absolutely love it. When I tell you that this blooms for a really long time, it really does. And even when it's not sending up bloom stalks, it has this tidy little clump of foliage that looks like a strappy grass that is really attractive. The pollinators also love this. And what I like about it is that it has this tall, wiry stem with this little pom-pom or little ball-shaped flower, very similar to like an allium. And um, if you deadhead it, again, cut off the spent blooms, you'll keep getting new bloom stalks coming up from the plant. This variety here is called Sea Pink, Dremera Vivid Dreams. It is a full sun perennial, and let's see how big it gets. It's a mounded habit, six to 12 inches in height, needs 10 to 12 inch spacing, water wind dry, and hardy down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. I actually have mine planted among the phlox and the daffodils, which makes for a really pretty spring display. And some coral bells. Look how beautiful these little blooms are. They look like sprays of baby's breath, but this one here happens to have a really pretty coral pink coloring. Now these are a shade to part shade type perennial, and usually you buy coral bells for their foliage, but the bonus is that you also get these sprays of these dainty little bell-shaped blooms. Now this variety here reminds me very much of the Proven Winners Spearmint um, in terms of the foliage. Let's see if I can get a better, see that? And then even the color of the blooms. I planted, um, not spearmint, but the silver gumdrops in my garden last year, and it's absolutely beautiful. And that one is a proven winner's variety. This one here happens to be by Vigoro, and it is called Coral Bells Hookera Paris. And let's see how big it gets. 10 to 18 inches in height, needs 12 to 18 inch spacing, water when dry, hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, while I don't think the deer eat these in my garden, I'm pretty sure maybe the bunnies do. Something does. I've had not great luck with coral bells, even though I love them, so I keep trying. But it is a really pretty part shade perennial. Have you ever fallen in love with the lemon coral sedum and been upset when it hasn't returned for you in your garden? Well, that is because the lemon coral sedum is an annual. But here is a beautiful perennial alternative. This is the Angelina Stonecrop Sedum. I have this variety in my garden and it's absolutely stunning. And it makes a beautiful ground cover and it's so easy to propagate. Once a little piece falls off, you tuck it in the soil, it will grow roots, and then you have a bunch more sedum. It's perfect, it's great. And even in the winter, it stays evergreen for me and turns a beautiful orange bronze color. I can't say enough about this plant. I absolutely love it. So this one here is the um, Angelina Stonecrop Prima. It is a full sun perennial, 1098 for this Vigoro container. It does creep and get pretty wide as a ground cover, so that's why the size will vary and the height as well. Water when dry, sedums in general like to stay on the drier side and it is hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It says that it blooms early to late summer and it's just a really tiny little yellow bloom. And check out this beautiful sedum. Sedums are really low maintenance. If you have a rock garden or an area that doesn't get a lot of water or that you want to make more drought tolerant, sedums are a great plant for that. And this one here, let's see what variety this is. It looks low growing because you can see it doesn't have much height. And it is called the Stone Crop Sun Sparkler. And this variety here gets to be, let's see, it's a clumping habit, six to eight inches in height. Needs 12 to 18 inch spacing, water when dry, and hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Blooms late summer through fall. Sedums are also pretty hardy. I really love the burgundy coloring on this one. And here at my store, the quart perennials are $5.98. So they have the flocks and they also have these little mini daisies here. Look how cute these are. These are the English Daisy Romanette Mix. They are only five inches in height, water when dry, negative 30 degrees hardiness, and they bloom late to late spring through midsummer. Now, I always thought that these were an annual, but let me know if these have reliably returned for you in your garden as perennial. I'm in a zone six. They also have this really pretty foliage that reminds me of like lettuce. Look at that. 
If you're looking for some pansies, they have some eight inch pansy planters at two for 10 as a special buy. They have some of these really pretty purple ones. They have yellow and white, and then there are these mixed ones as well with some orange and purple with white. So really pretty to add a little bit of spring flair in an already made planter. They also have these spring bowls here for $15.98. They're a 12 inch bowl and there are some snapdragons in some of them you can see here with some pansies. This is a really pretty pansy. And then they have some with Dusty Miller, which is a really hardy annual. Sometimes it even returns if it's in a little bit of a microclimate that stays a little bit warmer. And then there's some dianthus in this one. Okay, here is something that I would be careful about picking up too early, petunias. Petunias are a warm weather annual. So if you were to get excited about it being a beautiful day out and you brought home a couple of these baskets and then it gets to 40 degrees or lower at night in the next few days, you'd have to protect these. Bring them into a basement or a garage to protect them from the cold. Otherwise they could die. So just something to be careful about. Um, I know we all get really excited when the beautiful you know, annuals start showing up at the nursery, but we have to know that it's, you know, full start to the season. So wait a little longer on anything like a petunia or a tropical plant. And something really cool that I just found here at my Home Depot, a fringe tree. Now these are native here for us in Massachusetts or in the Northeast, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it is a full sun tree that gets these really fragrant, really beautiful white blooms. Very similar looking to say the Laura Pedlum blooms or the Chinese fringe flowers, um, but this likes full sun. And I'm actually gonna buy one of these, $26.98 for a number three container. And it gets to be, tw it needs 20, 12 to 20 foot spacing, blooms early to late summer, hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Now these can be grown as a really large shrub or you can train it as a tree. So there are some here that have multiple branches. This one, if you wanted a single stem tree, is already looking pretty good. Look at that. So excited. So this is what I'm taking home today. One of these fringe trees for my garden. Some Celine. This is a variegated foliage perennial that will send up stalks of a nice bright pink flower, like a fuchsia flower, small flower, bell shaped. And these are number three for $19.98. And then of course, some ground cover evergreens. Great option for ground cover is evergreen because they stay like this all year round, where some of those earlier ground covers that we looked at are perennial, which means that they will go dormant in the winter and then they will pop back up in the spring. This here is Juniper Will Tony. It's $14.98 for this container here. And um, this has sort of like a creeping or spreading habit. So it'll get very wide or it'll grow more horizontal than it will vertical. So they won't get very tall. So let's see the size here. And it's four to six foot spacing hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So very hardy. And that's what it looks like. It is deer resistant and I can vouch for that because I have some of this blue rug juniper growing on a hillside. The deer don't touch it. Pretty drought tolerant once established. Can get about to six inch height and um, beautiful coloring. I love evergreens that have this blue gray coloring. Right beside it, they have a larger option. So you, if you want to start with an already bigger one, $26.98 for the number three container of the same variety. The good thing about planting the smaller ones is that not only are they more affordable so that you can get multiples, they will grow and they're a smaller root ball, so a lot easier to plant. Another favorite blue evergreen that stays really low growing, which makes it a wonderful option for front of a border is the Blue Star Juniper. It has this pretty blue gray coloring. Now anything that is a blue or yellow evergreen will have the best color in full sun. And this one does read full sun. It is deer resistant in my garden, drought tolerant once established. It says that it gets 24 to 36 inches in height. Mine are about 10 years old. I have four of them in my garden and they're only maxing out at about 18 inches or so in height. Um, but they do get three to four feet in diameter. And that is what it reads here, 36 to 48 inches in spacing. And it's hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Juniper Old Gold. I also have this one in my garden and I absolutely love it. It has a really pretty golden uh, color on the tips and the more sun it gets, the more golden the tips get. I love to cut on this to make winter arrangements in my garden. 
for Christmas and the holidays and even just for the winter they look really pretty and you can see here the shape it almost has like a stacked shape it gets wider than it does tall it gets about 36 inches in height I would say that mine are about there now and they're about four years old or so deer resistant which the deer do not touch them in my garden they need six foot spacing and they're hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit and these here are a 3.78 liter for $14.98 you see this wildness right here? This is going to turn into a beautiful climbing hydrangea. So if you have an old stone or brick fireplace or even some kind of structure that you want to grow this up, even trees, these look really beautiful climbing up some trees. They like part sun. It's a climbing hydrangea. It says that it gets up to 20 feet in height. Um, it's good for a trellis. It has large blooms and it's early to late summer bloomer. 24 inch spacing and hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And these here don't have a specific variety. It's just named climbing hydrangea. And they are number two containers for $26.98. And you can see that they are all budded up and leafing out. And some Hanoki. I love Hanoki. It's no secret. I've talked about it over and over again. Um, this one here is called the Temple Hof Hanoki Cypress. It likes part sun. And this one says that it gets four to six feet in height. I do not have the Temple Hof in my garden. And it needs four to five foot spacing. So it appears by the specs that it would be a more compact Hanoki. Hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. But these have beautiful texture. When they grow, they have a nice like layered effect. They're just really pretty evergreens. And these here are pretty large containers. Let's see, Camisiparis Tempelhof, number five for $59.98. Some more hydrangeas. This one here is my first editions. It's called Berry White, and it is a full sun hydrangea. It says it has large blooms and a garden showpiece at six to seven feet in height and early to late summer blooming. It needs five to six foot spacing, hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and it likes full sun, so this is a panicle type hydrangea. Panicle type hydrangeas can take full sun or more sun than the macrophylla type hydrangeas, which are usually those mop head ones. Um, those prefer more shade. And these here are a number three container for $36.98. Sometimes you find some really cool, unique shrubs and trees and conifers and such at these box stores. I always find it like such a thrill in the hunt here. It's like, what are you gonna find? And today I found this really cool one too. It is a Japanese holly dwarf pagoda. It likes full sun, it is deer resistant, and it only gets to be 12 to 24 inches in height. And let's see, really small here, 24 to 30 inch spacing, hardy down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Now what's really cool about this is that you can prune this almost like a bonsai and put it in a container. It would look really pretty in an arrangement and it is evergreen, very similar in appearance to say a boxwood, but it's a type of holly. So I thought this was really pretty. I love the way that the foliage looks kind of stacked there. Now I collect Japanese maples and from far away, it almost looked like a shishigashira, which I thought was really cool. Cool. See that? Fourteen ninety eight. Something new at my store this year is a Fatha Giller. I have never seen this sold here in my stores, and um, a really pretty early season interest shrub gets these really cool looking blooms. Um, here's what they look like. They're usually white, like almost like a bottle brush plant as well, and they like full sun. It says it's a dwarf variety. Gets to be two to five feet in height. And it blooms mid-spring, needs five foot spacing, hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's see, it is $29.98 for number three container. And this one is all butted up and getting ready to bloom. And some proven winners, Winecraft Gold Smoke Bush. Now I have a royal purple smoke bush in my garden. This one is all butted up. It's not blooming yet, but this is a really beautiful variety of golden smoke bush. So rather than the purple, it'll be yellow. And it also stays more compact than the traditional smoke bush. Um, this one here is the Winecraft Gold by Proven Winners. And this one here is hardy in, let's see, zones five through eight or down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets to be four to six feet tall and four feet wide where the smoke bush can get much larger than that. And the thing with smoke bushes is that you can train them as a really large shrub or as a small tree. And let's see, it has colorful foliage, easy care, fall color, it likes sun or part shade. And these are number three containers for $36.98. And some hibiscus. This one is by First Edition Shrub. It's called French Cabaret Red Hibiscus. It looks like a really beautiful frilly hibiscus. 
And let's see how large it gets. It likes full sun, dark green foliage, medium water needs, and hardy in USDA growing zones five through eight. It gets to be five to eight feet in height and four to seven feet in width. And these are $36.98 for a number three container. And look at the beautiful spring foliage on these spirea shrubs. Spireas are great shrubs. My favorite by proven winners is the candy corn spirea, but this one is also really beautiful. It is the double play doozy spirea. And you can see that it will get these really beautiful clusters of fuchsia colored flowers at some point in the summer, early summer. And look how pretty that is. It likes sun or part shade. It is hardy in USDA growing zones three through eight or down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets to be two to three feet tall and wide. Colorful foliage, petite shrub, and reblooming. Pollinators absolutely love these. And what's great about Spirea is that they will start in early spring and then they will maintain their color all the way through late fall until you get your first frost. Really great shrub in the garden. And up here, they have a really cool Wygela variety called Checkmark Trilogy. What's interesting about the Checkmark Trilogy Wygela by Proven Winners is that it gets multiple shades of pink and white on one shrub. Look at that. Looks like a bouquet. Really pretty. And this one here, let's see how big it gets. The Checkmark Trilogy Wygela is hardy in USDA growing zones four through eight or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's pretty compact at about three to three and a half feet tall and wide easy care abundant blooms large flowers these four to five foot spacing and this here is a number three container for 36.98 and here are some of those macrophylla type or big leaf hydrangeas and this is a proven winners variety called let's dance can do it has really pretty pink blooms it's a reblooming big leaf hydrangea which is awesome because typically hydrangeas will have their really big bloom once and be done so the fact that this reblooms is really interesting. It says it was the flowering shrub of the year for 2023. It is hardy in USDA growing zones four through nine or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And it gets to be three to four feet tall and three feet wide. Needs six plus hours of sun a day. Now, while these are traditionally a part shade plant, they will need some sun in order for them to set blooms. Um, so about six hours. Morning sun is usually best because it's a little um, weaker than, say, an afternoon sun, which can be pretty harsh on plants that like part shade. And it's a reblooming variety, easy care. And these are number two containers for $29.98. One of my favorite grass-like perennials in my garden is Sweet Flag. This is a chorus and it is a really pretty grass-like foliage plant that almost looks very similar to like a Carex. Um, it stays evergreen for me in my garden. It has this really gorgeous variegated yellow and green coloring and it gets even more yellow when the temperatures cool off, say in early spring and in fall. You can easily divide this and it's a great plant for say a moist soil so if you have a problem area in your garden that maybe retains a little bit too much moisture this would be a great problem solver plant so let's read the specs on this one sweet flag ogon or the variegated sweet flag likes part sun so four to six hours of sun i actually have mine planted in full sun and it does just fine because that area is very moist so if the soil has a lot of moisture they can typically handle a little bit more sun and let's see they get to be six to 12 inches tall eight to 12 inches wide they need eight inch spacing very low maintenance the deer stay away from them unlike the carrots in my garden which the deer or bunny do like to eat not this one this is untouched by any critters and it looks absolutely beautiful. I love that it stays evergreen for me here in my zone six. The Acorus Sweet Flag is $12.98 for a number one or 3.78 liter container. The other great thing about this is that it has a very similar look to say the Hakanakloa or the Japanese forest grass. The growth habit is very similar. It has this graceful kind of arching habit on the foliage. The color is very similar to say the uh, areola variety, which is variegated gold and green. And it's also probably more easily um, accessible. Some Sometimes the Hakanakloa can be hard to find, and when you do find it, it's a little bit pricey. So this might be a good alternative with the added bonus that it stays evergreen. And a really pretty elderberry. This is the lemon lace elderberry, which is a golden variety. Now I have the black lace elderberry in my garden. Uh, the only thing that is a bit problematic for me is that the deer love to eat on it. Um, but it's a beautiful foliage. It actually looks very similar to like a Japanese maple when it's all leafed out. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? 
So the lemon lace elderberry also stays more compact than the traditional black lace elderberry. So this one here only gets to be three to five feet tall and wide, where the black lace gets more to be 10 to 12 feet tall and wide. So it's quite large. And let's see, it's hardy in USDA growing zones three through seven or down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It likes sun or part shade. Gorgeous. Now, I would be picking this up in a heartbeat if I didn't deal with so many deer, and I already have to protect my uh, black lace elderberry. So let's see how much this is. The lemon lace elderberry is a number two container for $29.98. Creeping thyme, and this actually smells so good. Love it. I was just standing here admiring its scent. This is great for a ground cover, but this is not a ground cover that you could walk on. But say you have pavers or stepping stones, this would be really nice planted in between. It gets this really pretty little pink flower. It's called Magic Carpet Creeping Thyme, 998 full sun perennial, and it's very low growing, two inch height, 12 inch spacing, hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And it will be blooming in late spring through midsummer. And one of my favorite panicle hydrangeas in my garden, the Little Lime Hydrangea. It is a smaller, more compact version of the traditional limelight hydrangea. I actually bought a couple of these to put in my mom's garden last year, and I have a drift or a little hedge of three of them by my shed that looks absolutely beautiful. So many color changes that these go through. The Little Lime Panicle Hydrangea likes sun and part shade. I have mine planted in full sun, and because it is a panicle hydrangea, it can take more sun. It is hardy in USDA zones three through eight or down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit and it only gets to be three to five feet tall and wide where the traditional limelights get to be more like six to eight feet tall and wide so this is a great more compact option and it goes through such gorgeous color changes it will start oh this fell off I'm gonna have to have someone reattach it it will start off um, light green when it starts budding up, then it'll turn this creamy white, and then as the summer goes on and the nighttime temperatures begin to cool off, you'll start getting these beautiful shades of pink, and in the fall they turn mauve, just stunning. Really love these. So this is a number two container for $29.98, and these are already starting to leaf out. And you know how I was just mentioning that sometimes you find some unique varieties at the box store nursery? Look at this rhododendron. This one is called Percy Wiseman. I've never seen this here, so I looked it up. It does look like a specialty, a version of a rhododendron. It likes part sun. Look at that beautiful apricot peach color on that bloom. Gets to be 36 to 48 inches in height, and it blooms in late spring. It needs four to six foot spacing, hardy down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That is gorgeous. And it is $17.98 for this number one container. And I'm going to go ahead and pick myself up one of these as well. A really pretty Japanese holly called Golden Hillary. It likes part sun, has a very similar appearance to a boxwood. And look at this beautiful variegated yellow and green coloring. The Japanese holly Golden Hillary is a part sun shrub, getting to be 30 to 36 inches in height, provides winter interest, blooms late spring, but blooms on the holly are gonna be similar to what you see on boxwood, a little tiny white button, pretty insignificant. You mostly grow them for the foliage and shape. And they need 26 to 48 inch spacing, hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And these here are number three containers for $39.98. Check out this really pretty foliage. This belongs to a perennial called Oriental Poppy. Now these have a really pretty orange red bloom. The variety is called Allegro. Now these are a full sun perennial and they will return for you year after year. They have a really deep tap root. So once you plant them in a spot, you wanna make sure you like them in that spot because they don't really transplant that well due to that long tap root. They also don't like to sit in wet soil. So you wanna have a well draining soil because they can be, you know, they can be susceptible to crown rot, which means they'll rot at the crown, the plant will topple over and they'll die back and then they won't return as a perennial. They are 18 to 36 inches in height. They need water when dry, hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and they bloom late spring through midsummer. And another really pretty foliage plant that will get blooms, Polymonium, also known as Jacob's Ladder. And this variety here is called Heavenly Habit. And look at that. It's really pretty texture foliage. And they'll get these little bell-shaped blue purple flowers. And this variety looks like it's called Heavenly Habit, rich violet blue flowers on compact spreading mats of ferny foliage that bloom May through June, best grown in partial shade. And they get to be one and a half feet in height in about the same spread, I would say. And they like sun part shade, hardy in zones three through seven. 
And check out this great deal on these Globe Arborvitae. These are the Dwarf Arborvitae Little Giant that grow in a globe shape. I have a friend who has some of these in her garden and she does tell me they're deer resistant. What's great about these is if you're looking for an evergreen that stays in a round shape but that won't require the maintenance that boxwood require with all of the clipping, this might be a great option for you. The Dwarf Arborvitae Little Giant likes full sun, gets to be 24 to 30 inches in height and 36 inch spacing, hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And these were $14.98, but they're currently $8.88 here at my store. And they're a nice small size. It looks like it's a maybe a number one container, which would make them really easy to plant. And these grow pretty quick. There are little birds flying all over here, trying to pick leaves off of these perennials to build some nests. How cute. This brings us to the end of the April inventory here at the Home Depot. I hope that you've enjoyed checking out what my store has in stock, and I hope that you can find some of these varieties near you. Thank you for spending your time with me, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button, and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos, and we'll see you soon.